No doubt you have come across a lot of snarky jerks in your travels throughout Skyrim. It seems like you can't go 10 feet without being insulted. I should bash your face in after all you've done. So in case you're wondering which one of these are the worst of the worst, here are the five biggest jerks in Skyrim. If there is one person in this game that deserves a spot on this list, it is Nazim. This guy is the epitome of delusional self-importance. I actually advise the Jarl on political matters. My input is invaluable, of course. Nazim starts his day by insulting the owner of the drunken huntsman's meat. He will then go to spend the majority of his day wandering around the merchant stalls of Whiterun insulting Carlotta's fruit. These fruits and vegetables are disappointing, Carlotta. If you were getting them from my farm, they'd be twice as fresh. That's completely untrue, Nazim. Your farm sucks, and it doesn't even have any fruit on it, you dumb skeever. I think I should have a word with this guy. This harassment has to end. Do you get to the Cloud District very often? Oh, what am I saying? Of course you don't. Are you kidding me, Nazim? The Cloud District isn't even a district. It's one building. And I do get there often. I'm the freaking Thane of Whiterun. I have a house, Carl. I bet you don't have one of those, Nazim. As a matter of fact, this guy doesn't even have his own house. He lives on the second floor of the Drunken Huntsman. That's right, the same people he starts his day insulting. If I were those guys, I would have kicked him out and found a better tenant to rent to. So much for earning your way to the top, Nazim. Even his wife doesn't like him. Looking for my husband, Nazim? Check the Jarl's backside. That's usually where he stuffs himself these days. The majority of the Jarls in Skyrim are terrible. There's Igmund, who's basically the reason for the Stormcloak Rebellion, Layla Lawgiver, who doesn't realize her own town is overrun with corruption, and Sidgear, who lets bandits attack his people. But if any of them were to be labeled a jerk, it would be Scald the Elder. You're not as dumb as you look. Upon our very first visit to Dawnstar, Scald can be seen harassing two retired Imperial soldiers, all because one of them likes to wear their Imperial armor. This isn't over. I'll have you both executed. That's a little extreme, Scald. If you haven't noticed, he's not a fan of the Imperials. As a matter of fact, he is more interested with aiding the Stormcloak Rebellion than he is with defending his citizens from bandit raids or dragon attacks. Speaking of dragons, Scald is under the impression that the dragons are only attacking Skyrim because the Nords have forsaken the Ninth Divine Talos. Despite dragons having nothing to do with Talos, and Skyrim being the only province to still openly worship him. Now that doesn't make him a jerk but I just wanted to point out how stupid this guy is also. Continuing on with his lack of care for his subject, Skald is pretty rude to his servant Bulfric, who is willing to do anything to stop working for Skald, including joining the Stormcloak Rebellion. A servant? Enlisting in the Stormcloaks? Oh, Bulfric. Oh, you're always good for a laugh. As you might imagine, this makes Scald not very well liked amongst his people. He's a fool if you haven't met him already. As a matter of fact, I couldn't find anyone that actually had something positive to say about this guy. You need to work on your PR, Scald. If you have ever passed through the city of Windhelm, then you have no doubt met the Nord supremacist Rolf Stonefist. Ralph has a deep-seated hatred of the Argonians and an even stronger hatred of the Dunmer, which is a problem for me since I am a Dunmer. Damn Grayskin, go back to Morrowind. Oh yeah, well maybe you should go back to your... house that showed him. Every night, I walk around a Grey Quarter and let them Grayskins know what I think of them. And he is not kidding. You can see him out there every single night, wandering through the Grey Quarter drunkenly shouting insults. Go back to Morrowind. Dark elf maggots. Strangely, he doesn't seem to hate the Altmer as much, despite the Altmer being the ones that started the war and banned Talos worship in the first place. Unfortunately, you can't kill Rolf in order to stop him from disturbing the Dunmer, as he is flagged as an essential character, which is absurd. Although, after beating him up, he does seem to be really warming up to me. He now considers me a friend and even attended my wedding. Congratulations on your wedding. I'm so happy for the both of you. You know what? He's a pretty good guy after all. I think I'll stop by and see how he's doing. Get out of my face. That's it, Rolf. I've had it. <gasps> it seems like corruption is everywhere in Skyrim, and the city of Markarth is no exception. Markarth's Jarl may be Igmund, but the true ruler of the city is Thonar Silverblood. 
Thonar not only owns most of the real estate in Markarth, he also owns the prison. That's right, Markarth's prison is privatized, which means don't expect any rehabilitation there. But the prison isn't simply a place to keep criminals. Its real purpose is to act as a mine, where prisoners toil day and night to mine for silver. And so far, it's been extremely profitable for the Silverblood family. And since able-bodied men are needed in order to do the mining, Thonar makes sure that able-bodied men are imprisoned, which sometimes means framing a person for murder. I don't even know who they said I killed. Which, as it turns out, is pretty easy for Thonar since he has the Markarth guards in his pocket. We had a nice little deal going between Thonar and Madanach until you showed up. Speaking of things in Thonar's pocket, Thonar has the Forsworn King imprisoned in the mine as well, which allows him to use the King's influence in order to ensure that no one meddles in his affairs. Such as Margaret here, who was an Imperial agent attempting to try and bring the prison back under Imperial control. But the Silver Butts don't just own the prison, the tavern, and the local farms, they also own the bank. That's right, the same guy who's framing people for murder in order to get free labor also has all of your valuables. Alright, we can't let this guy keep getting away with such crimes. It's time to bring the truth to light. You'll never see the sun again, you hear me? No one escapes Sidna Mine. No one. Huh. Probably should have saw that coming. Now that we are imprisoned ourselves, we discover that Thonar's control of the Forsworn King wasn't as strong as he thought. And despite the claim that no one escapes Sidna Mine, there is an exit right here, and the King has the key to it. Seems like a bit of an oversight to me. At long last, we're free. Your reign of tyranny is at an end, Thonar. <laughs> the Reach belongs to the Reachmen. From the very first meeting with Mercer Frey, it is clear that this guy is not a nice person. Don't you have better things to do than disturb me? But he is still the Guildmaster, so he probably isn't that bad. Right? The first mission Mercer gives us is to infiltrate Golden Glow Estate, which one of the guild's best infiltrators had just failed at. Maybe I'm wrong, but this does kind of sound like he's trying to get us killed. Well, after succeeding at that and a few other missions, Mercer asks us to help track down a rogue guild member and end her for good. Oh, by the way, this is a spoiler warning. I don't want to hear any of that. You didn't tell me about the spoilers crap because here it is, okay? Moving on. All right, I think this is the spot, Mercer. Oh, no. I've been shot! Mercer, help me out, pal. Farewell. I'll be certain to give Brynjolf your regards. I thought we were friends. It's all over. I can feel it. Goodbye, cruel world. Oh, I'm alive. Well, it turns out that wasn't the first time Mercer has betrayed a friend. He also killed the previous guildmaster of the Thieves' Guild, Gallus, and then framed Gallus' lover, Carlia, for the murder. But Mercer's crimes do not end there. Mercer has also been stealing gold from the Thieves' Guild, which I'm surprised is not a more common problem. But as they say, honor among thieves. Or is it no honor among thieves? Huh. But Mercer's greatest crime was that he stole a Daedric artifact from the prince near Mina, which he promised to protect from being stolen. Come on, Mercer, that oath was stronger than a pinky promise. This, of course, means we're gonna have to kill him for his crimes. What the hell? That's not usually what happens when people die. The deed is done, let's head back to the Thieves' Guild. So, you're Brynjolf's new protege, eh? Don't look like much to me. New protege? What the hell are you talking about, Vekel? I'm the guildmaster now. I changed my mind. This guy's number one. I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to hit the subscribe button if you are not subscribed already. If there is someone that you think was a bigger jerk than these guys, make sure to let me know in the comments. That way we can expose them for what they truly are. Which is jerks, of course. I also have a video on the top five oblivion jerks, so make sure to check that out while you're at it. And I will see you guys in the next video.